how to grow your fan base and your audience online by going fishing. Sounds crazy, but I'm gonna show you how to do that on the other side of the intro. Let's go. What's up, what's up, what's up everybody? Jamal, AKA Boss Eagle here, billboard charting hip hop artist and music business coach at Business Minded Musicians. <laughs> Today I'm gonna be showing you how you can grow your fan base and your audience for your music online. Just before we get into that, I just want to remind you to go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I love uh, teaching and sharing with independent artists um, how to grow their music business. So if you like videos like this, go ahead and just hit that subscribe button. And I also wanna remind you that you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Business Minded Musicians and on Twitter at Biz Minded Music. And I also want to share with you my new podcast, the Indie Musician Secrets Podcast. The goal through that podcast is going to be kind of similar to this, where it's going to be educational and teaching things, but also interview style too, where we're going to be interviewing people in the music industry and unlocking the quote unquote secrets um, so that you can take control of your music career. So that's the Indie Musician Secrets Podcast. It's on Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, and all your, your major platforms for streaming. And at the time of making this video, only the trailer is up. Right now, that was just to get the approvals, but we should be launching some episodes uh, very soon for your listening pleasure. Um, so I'm here at the whiteboard today, and we're gonna talk about how to grow your fan base online. And it's gonna be by a process that you're, you're, you're probably gonna be a little bit confused by, at least here in the beginning, and that is by going fishing. So this is actually a concept um, that I've talked about before, but I don't think you can talk about this enough. I think one of the best ways to kind of explain how to do this is by using what we call a Venn diagram. And that's just basically where we're gonna have two circles here that will overlap at a certain point. And over here, we have the friends and family. Okay, hopefully you can see that. So the friends and family sphere. And this is where most of us are gonna start out. A lot of us are going to go to our personal sphere first, right? This is our personal sphere. And so this could be coworkers, colleagues, neighbors, just the, it's the people that we know that are in our personal space. And this is natural, it's natural to start here, but what I will share with you and what's gonna be a hard pill to swallow is that this is what actually causes a lot of frustration for independent musicians, right? You've probably heard several artists will say, people don't support me. My friends and family, they don't come to shows. People on the internet support me more than the people who know me. That frustration is actually your fault. Let me say that again. That frustration that you feel about not having support, the lack of support, those types of things, that's actually your fault. This is a hard pill to swallow, but I promise you, if you can swallow this pill, you're gonna be 50% or more of the way there to getting to that place you wanna be. The reason that this is, the frustration is your fault is because of one word. Expectation. There's two things that happen here in terms of expectation. One, we have the expectation that family and friends have to support us, that there's this like this unspoken, unwritten, that they should show us support. And the second thing is that we have this sense or this idea that they should support us in the ways that we think that they should support us. So if our family and our friends aren't coming to shows, if they're not buying merch, if they're not doing these things, then we say that they're not supporting us. And, you know, we get frustrated because we'll, we'll see that, you know, their posts on, on social media is like, oh, they spent hundreds of dollars and drove two hours to go see X, Y, and Z artists. And you're like, but I had a show five minutes away and you didn't come to my show. Well, that's because you had the expectation that they were supposed to support you anyway. See, just because these people are in your life, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have an interest or an investment into your music or your business or your brand. And you know what? They don't have to. And sometimes they are showing us support, but it's, it may not necessarily be in the ways that we think they should support us. Some people are gonna come to shows, some people aren't. Some people are gonna buy merch, some people aren't. Some people are going to share and post on your, con on your socials, and some people are not, and that's okay. What we need to do is we need to release, we need to release our family and friends from the obligation 
of our expectation. We need to release them from that. And once you do, you'll feel that freedom of being like, hey, you know what, it's okay. They may just be over here as friends and family and, and they may not necessarily be fans. And that is okay. Which takes us to how do we get from here to getting to a place where we grow our fan base, our audience, et cetera, et cetera. And that is when we, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this, this word expectation. So we're not gonna have that anymore, right? <laughs> so what we need to do is we need to go from here to here. And the quicker we get there, the better, okay? Now again, a lot of us are gonna start out over here and that's okay, but we have to move from this sphere to this one, which is the fan sphere. This, this is how you're going to grow your fan base and your audience for your music today and in any day. You have to grow a fan base. Remember, these people aren't necessarily fans. These people are. They're already interested in what you do. Okay, we just have to go find the ones who are interested and going to be interested in you, right? And what happens is you may have, and you probably will have some overlap. And some of your family and friends are also fans of yours. And that's why there's this overlap. And some of your fans may enter this personal space. They may not become family. They, not be, they may not become friends per se, but you, they may enter into more of a personal space um, instead of, it's purely the professional space, right? So what we have to do is we have to come over here and we have to find fans. And that is how we're gonna grow our, our audience base online. And so how do we do that? This is where I'm gonna talk about the importance of going fishing, right? These people already exist. And how do we know that? is these people are already, they're already listening to artists. They're, they're already invested in that space, that genre of music, those types of things. So what we have to do is we have to go fishing. And the way that we do that is we have to go find, let me erase this here. We have to find similar artists. second hard pill to swallow okay i don't know how many times i've probably heard independent artists say i don't sound like anyone else yes you do yes you do and and if you if if you don't have anyone that you can match yourself sonically to you should probably think about that so when you go on websites when you're on your digital distributor or other platforms and they say you know who who do you sound like you know who does this artist sound like Right? <laughs> Question mark. Meaning you, when you're uploading your stuff, did you know that that's actually not for you? It's not to offend you. It's not to, to, to make you feel bad about yourself. Be like, oh, I don't sound unique or whatever. No, no, no. You know what this is for? It's for these people. It's for the fans because think about it. If I'm already listening to a certain artist, or a, a, a certain group of artists that have a similar sound, or I like a similar sound, what are the chances going to be that I'm going to give maybe an ear to someone who sounds like them? If I already like the Imagine Dragons, then I'm, I may be inclined to listen to a band that says, hey, we kind of sound like the Imagine Dragons. Now, that doesn't mean that their voice sounds exactly like Dan Reynolds. It doesn't mean that they make the exact same types of songs. It just means in, in, in this space, who would we be who would we be similar to? If you were to ask me in five seconds, give me your what do you sound like? Who do you sound like? Pitch. Will Smith meets Lecrae with a splash of Kanye. Does that mean I sound exactly like those guys? No, but that's going to give you an idea. And what do you start to think about when you think about those artists, right? Well, Will Smith is clean. My music's clean. Lecrae has the spiritual tones. My, my music is, has the spiritual tones. And then Kanye, kind of creative aspect, you know, just kind of those types of things. And I have a, a little bit of that as well in some of my music too. Now, it doesn't mean I sound exactly like those guys, but it gives a listener, gives an audience an idea of what they would be in for. So that's what we have to do first. We have to figure out who we sound like. 
who are those similar artists that if someone were to say, hey, what's your music kind of like? It's kind of like Linkin Park, Bruno Mars, Amy Winehouse, kind of Lady Gaga. Oh, okay, well, I already know those names, right? Now I might be more inclined to listen to your music. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. And this is how we actually grow, because I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, Jamal, that's great. Okay, I get all that, but now how do I grow that fan base? So how do we go fishing and what does that mean? Let's say you liked fish. Let's say you really liked fish and someone says, hey, um, there's a piece of land over here um, that you could build a pond. Only thing is you're gonna have to raise the money to buy the land. You're gonna have to go to the city. You're gonna have to get permits, approvals, um, the, 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 you gotta get contractors, people have to bring equipment out, you have to do all these things. Oh, plus, um, you know, that neighboring town over there, yeah, they actually own the water rights to all of this area. So you're gonna have to go to them, you're gonna have to get water rights, they're gonna have to, you know, find a way to, to, to fill in your pond. Oh, and then you're gonna have to go get fish. And then you're gonna have to actually fish and, and, and catch them and eat them. That sounds like a lot of work. Instead, what we do, now that we know who we sound like, we go to their pond because their pond is already built. So here's a pond. Let's say you're a, a female country singer. Okay, and let's say you sound similar to certain artists. So here's, here's Carrie Underwood's pond that she's already built. She has already amassed this audience over years of being in the industry. And then here is, uh, here's Miranda Lambert. Okay. And then here is Kelsey Ballerini. And then here is Marin Morris. And these ladies have already built these ponds. They already have fan bases. So all you have to do now is go out there with your fishing pole and cast right into Marin Morin's pond. And then right into Kelsey Ballerini's pond and then right into Miranda Lambert's pond and right into Carrie Underwood's and so on and so on and so forth. Now, what you're doing is you're not creating, you're not building your own pond, right? You're not going out and getting permits and, and digging the land and trenches and all these other things. You're looking at it and saying, here, Marin Morris already has a pond of millions of fans. Carrie Underwood already has a pond of millions of fans. Kelsey Ballerini, Miranda Lambert, they already have ponds with millions of fans and so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go fish in these different ponds and that's how I'm going to build my fan base I'm gonna take all these fish and I'm gonna drop them into my bucket over here because I kind of am similar to these ladies these people are already listening to these ladies so they may be more inclined to check my music out and then I'm just filling my bucket creating my own pond over here with fans from their ponds. So that's why it's important, one, again, as we go back to understand, it's important to move as quickly as possible out of the friend and family sphere. But when you move over here, you make the opportunity to grow bigger because there are gonna be so many artists out there with such big ponds that are gonna be, that are gonna be thousands of times bigger than your personal space. Of friends and family does that make sense so we want to go and we want to fish in all these ponds because let's just say you know let's just say hypothetically right you know a thousand people realistically how many of those people are going to become fans of your music not very many not very many what are the chances of you building a fan base out of these ponds and many more right Merritt Morris's pond is going uh, of simply fans is going to be bigger than the amount of people that you know and that's just one pond, okay? So that's how we do it. We figure out who we sound like, we move out of that friends, that friends and family sphere, figure out who we sound like, and, and then we start fishing into those people's ponds. Now, how do you do that? That's gonna be up to you. With so much available today with, with ads, with Facebook, Instagram ads, please, please, please don't, don't listen to all the horror stories that Facebook ads don't work and all this other stuff because it's, it's baloney. And the people that are saying that are just probably the people who don't know how to make it work. But this is how people like myself even have built um, and, and grown my own Spotify and things like that. It's because 
you go out and you find those things that, that people are already identifying with that you do and you fish out of those ponds. So don't listen to the horror stories. Um, ads are probably gonna be the best way to go is by running ads, ads with your music because that's what you want to give them. You want to give them something that they're already kind of used to experiencing, okay? So hopefully this is helpful for you, um, understanding uh, how to move out of that friends and family sphere, move over to the fan sphere, finding more fans, building your fans, building that, that fan base online by fishing in the ponds of similar artists. Um, and, and, the, and the more and more and more you keep doing this, you're gonna refine that even more as well, and you're gonna really dial in and find those people who are your fans. So again, hopefully um, this, this video was helpful for you. If you like videos, like I said, I wanna continue to make more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. Ding that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. And please go ahead and leave me a comment below too. Let me know if, if you need to let maybe a little bit more explanation on this, or let me know maybe how you're using this. If you're like, hey, I've been doing this and it's been successful, you know, let us know in the comments as well. Um, go out, start fishing, and build your fan base, all right? And remember, uh, never give up, okay? Even if you have to slow down, that's okay. Just don't give up, all right? I'm Jamal, aka Boss Eagle with business-minded musicians. God bless, and I will see y'all when I see you. Peace.